Okay, so let's do this in real time. So now that I've got the cluster set up, um, so I've got the master, I've got two nodes. Um, let's just log back in and make sure that everything is looking okay. So I have one, two, three here, one, two, three. Let's uh, do a control get nodes dash O wide. All right, cool. So everything's ready and working, master. Everything's up there. We've got platform nine, you know, managing the Kubernetes side of things, but everything is now hunky-dory. So let's now go and talk about the storage. At the moment, if we do a kube control get sc, there's no storage class. Um, there's no real storage here. Um, so this is just a, a raw cluster. We do have the networking setup up from before. Let's try and get that. There we go. So Metal LB is doing the load balancing. That's all good. So we're ready to go with the storage. So I'm, I'm looking at Rook, um, which is basically going to install and manage Ceph at the back end. So using a bit of object storage, Rook interfaces with that and does things from what I can read pretty well. Like previously, I've looked at Longhorn. Um, but honestly, I had some problems with the CSI and the volume snapshotting, which is obviously key to what I want to be doing here with the application that we're going to run um, in dev and also how we're going to move it to production eventually, right? So what I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to just actually record this part. So I'm going to use ASCII. Let's have a look and see if I can find history grep ASCII. Uh, no, so let's go and just do an... ASCII, oops, I'm going to find it here. Let's find out what we've got to put in. I think I've installed ASCII. Uh, ASCII Cinema, that is. So let's do an ASCII Cinema record. Let's drop us into another shell. Oops, haven't installed it yet. Okay, let's install ASCII. For those that don't know what ASCII is, it basically is a screen recording tool. Um, Let's you take what you've done in a CLI session and it will record that and put it online. Um, and then what the cool thing about it, it doesn't actually put it up as a movie. It puts it up as a, what looks like a movie, but you can still copy and paste the commands in, which I find is really cool. So let's do an ASCII record. Okay, there we go. So now we're back in, we're recording. So now we're actually recording the session. Now let's go and install Rook. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and make sure that we're in, where are we? Okay, we're in the root section here. Okay, so let's go and clone the um, project from GitHub. So we're going to clone it into the local system here. Okay, so let's go CD Rook. And what this has done, if we go here, we can see that we've basically downloaded the whole project into this location. It's got this good set of basic um, stuff to go in and do an example configuration, which works pretty well from what I've read. So let's go and do Ceph, okay? And it's got a bunch of YAML files. We're effectively just gonna do some default installs here. So let's run this okay create a bunch of objects let's now create the cluster okay and now we want to basically watch this thing build out so this is going to take a little bit of time to do its thing um, but let's have a look at it and see what it's doing so you can get pods let's watch it all build so it's going to download the runtime in the container and then it's going to kick off a whole bunch of things. So let's come back when this is actually finished. It's got to download a fair bit. So while it's happening, how this is working is you need, um, so it's obviously Rook will present block um, storage to the Kubernetes cluster. A uh, number of different options as well there in terms of what it can present. But effectively, if we go to the other nodes here, we'll see that we've got um, the main device, which is the main disk, and we've got SDB. That's a raw device. So as part of this configuration on each of these clusters, it's going to set up a three-node Ceph cluster. It's going to basically take control of that particular disk, and it's going to use it uh, for the purpose of the cluster, and then present that back to 
Kubernetes. So here we go. So it's going through and doing a bunch of stuff now. So effectively installing Ceph at the back end on the three node cluster. And then it's going to install the Rook components, which is how Kubernetes will interface with the storage. So let's give this time to finish again. All right, I think that is pretty much, oh no, still a couple more. All right, so 10 minutes in, it looks like we're, we've settled. Okay, so everything is, nothing else is being created, everything's completed. So we've got every pod in the namespace is now running, um, everything is good to go. So the next thing to do is just to make sure that um, Ceph is running properly. I think there is, there's, they've basically included like a little uh, container runtime that you can actually use to call some Ceph commands to make sure that everything's up and running. So that's like toolbox. So let's see if we've got this toolbox YAML file. Okay, so here it is. So it's going to download, yep, okay. Download a little, it looks like a container runtime that we can do some things in. Okay, so let's basically configure this now. Okay, it's created. Let's check to see if it's ready. Rook Ceph tools, rolled out. Okay, so now we can go to the shell of that. Okay, we're in the shell there and we can run some commands here. So let's do a Ceph status. Okay, so there we go. So uh, what have we got? One pool, um, our words are in place. So we've got 300 gigs available, which is correct because it used the three 100 gig drives that I had. So now if we go back to the, the, the nodes or the workers, you'll see that Ceph has claimed SDB on both of them. And this is actually on the master as well. That's our three drives there. Very good. Okay, so let's do an OSD status. So Ceph OSD status. Okay, everything's looking good there. Ceph DF and a Rados BF everything looking good there right so we're good here so we'll leave that toolbox in play we'll leave it running go back to the master command line and now the next step is this has got a dashboard so we're going to basically expose the dashboard so if we do a, I think it's all and it, the great thing about it is everything's here right so let's have VI um, let's have a look here so we want to get the services that are running within this namespace. So everything that's been installed so far. So we can see here that we've got a dashboard here, not exposed, running on 8.4.4.3. So let's now expose that dashboard. So if we do a VI, so we want to do it via the load balancer. So dashboard external HTTPS dot YAML. So type node port, let's change that type to actually is there a load balancer thing as well so let's try no let's try ah uh, here we go dashboard load balancer yaml it's pretty much there so it would have been just change the node port to the load balancer but what we'll do is we'll take this one and we'll run this let's keep control create dash f dashboard load balancer Okay, now if we get the services again, there we go. We've, we should see that Met, Metal LB has assigned an IP address from the pool and we're good to go. So uh, there's also a way to get the password. So admin, so there's a default admin user that runs and gives you the password. You can copy that if you want. It doesn't matter. This will be destroyed. Okay, so let's just go and take a quick look at the dashboard just to see what it looks like because I think it's, it's pretty cool. 
So if we log in here to the exposed IP, which was a metal LB, uh, let's do username of admin and let's get that password actually, just so we can put it back into play. Let me just grab that. So let's use that password that we had before. Let's log in. So again, this gives you a bit of an overall status of what's happening under the surface. I mean, obviously Kubernetes is interfacing with this through Rook, um, but it's there for a view anyway. So just handy to see what's happening, especially, you know, throughput is interesting, capacity, all that kind of jazz. It's, it's just handy to have. Okay, so with that all done, now let's go into the funky thing and actually start to create the storage classes. Um, and let's get the volume snapshotting going. So this part is definitely not for the faint hearted. Um, so what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be going and leveraging the official Kubernetes CSI snapshotter um, CRDs. And we're gonna run a bunch of them. I've got them all copied here. And it's gonna go through and effectively prep this cluster for the snapshotting capability that we need. So effectively, um, volume snapshot class and the snapshot controller. So we've got to take all of these and run all of these here. Command, oh, it's annoying. Um, okay, so let me just, my cut and paste wasn't very good there. Let's just run these all in one go, one after another. So I'm basically taking these directly from the internet, right? Okay, that already exists, it already exists. Okay, that's okay, let's paste that in. Okay, already created. Go to the third one. All right. Now, this is just for me, this has been the hardest thing to wrap around how to get this working, okay? This was in V1 beta for a long time, but now it's all good. Okay, so that's all been put into play there. I think that's good. We will soon find out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and actually use the Ceph, um, the Rook provided storage class to create that. So we're going to go into, where are we here? So CSI. And we're going to go into RDB. Oops. And you can see we've got a bunch of YAML files, a bit of CID, a few CIDs here. And now we're gonna basically create the storage class and the storage snapshot class as well. So let's do the storage class first. Okay. And now we wanna create the snapshot class. But before that, I wanna take a look at the actual YAML file. Cause I wanna just, try and change this to V1 and not the beta. I think that's correct. Okay. Actually, that was already, that was already there. All right, that's okay. We might get a few errors on that or a few warnings down the track. That's okay. So now we want to create that. Okay. So now we should have a storage class. Get C. All right, there we go. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we want to make that storage class now a default. That will just save some pain when we're deploying applications a little bit later on. Okay, it's patched, so now it should be the default. Cool. 
Okay, and next here, let's do a look and see what volume snapshot class we got. So kube control get um, volume snapshot class. Okay, so there we go. Excellent. So here's the thing. How can we make sure that this is actually okay? Well, actually, to start with, I'm going to just finish off. I'm going to do a control D here. I'm going to exit, which should take us out of the recording. Um, so let's enter to upload that. Okay, so now what I want to do is just test to make sure that everything is Okay, the best tool to use actually is one from Kasten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure we've got W get installed. Uh, yep, we're all good. And I'm going to get uh, what's Kubster. So Kubster, I'll po post the link as well. Uh, but Kubster is used to basically test to make sure that we're all good with storage. Okay, so I realize I shouldn't have done it in this particular directory, but that's okay. Let's move it to root. No, oh, we're ready in right. Ah, because I exited. Very good. I'm in the I'm in the right place. Don't mind me. Okay, we're gonna do a tar minus x xvf creepster. Okay, we're gonna do a uh, where are we? Chmod uh, plus x to make it executable on creepster. Okay. So now if we run Kubster, it's going to go in and test the system. So it might give us some warnings. Yep, so we're all okay. So this is a CSI driver. It's got a storage class and it's got a volume snapshot class as well. Um, so looks like I did use, in one of those descriptors, I did actually use... Um, the V1 beta one, that's okay. We could change it later. It doesn't impact it for this. Um, obviously, if you're running this in production, which is later on, we would have wanted to use uh, the V1 and not the V1 beta one. Okay, so with that, what I now want to do is test out the snapshotting to make sure that we're actually good with that. And Kubster as well has a really good tool that's inbuilt to test the snapshotting to make sure that we're ready for whatever we're going to do, uh, whether it be backup or, you know, a stateful applications. So what this is going to do, it's going to download a container, it's going to run it, and it's going to do a snapshot of an application. And then it's going to try and re recover it as well. So don't worry about those particular ones there. That's just, again, talking about the fact that I didn't change it from to V1, from V1 beta. So it's created a snapshot successfully. Now it's trying to restore the snapshot. This pretty much means that we've successfully deployed a Kubernetes storage. Uh, Rook is working beautifully. It's leveraging Ceph at the back end. Perfect. There we go. Okay. So we've taken the snapshot. We've been able to back up and recover that particular stateful workload. So we're very good here. Okay. All right. So there we go. So if we clear that, and if we now go back and look at, you know, um, Control get pods dash n rook ceph. Everything is now running. The toolbox is still running. We've basically got this purring. We've validated the fact that we've installed the CSI. We've got the snapshotting working. We've got the volume snapshot. We've got the storage class configured. So rook is presenting block to the Kubernetes cluster. But at the back end, we're running object storage, which is pretty cool. On to the next one.